Welcome. Today, we'll be addressing an exceptionally difficult topic, the story of Grace Mullane. It's a narrative that shook society, sparking crucial discussions about online dating safety, violence against women, and personal security. Let's begin by learning a bit about Grace, a young, vibrant woman full of life, dreaming of exploring the world. Grace Mullane, born on December 2, 1996 in Essex, England, was a vibrant and adventurous young woman. Raised in a loving family, Grace had a close bond with her parents, David and Gillian Mullane, and her two brothers. From an early age, she displayed a curious and compassionate nature, embodying a zest for life. As a child, Grace developed a passion for travel and exploring different cultures. Her family's adventures together fueled her desire to see the world. Grace was an excellent student and actively participated in various extracurricular activities, showcasing her diverse talents and outgoing personality. In her teenage years, Grace's adventurous spirit continued to grow. She became more independent, harboring a dream of venturing beyond her hometown. After completing her studies, Grace decided to embark on a journey of self-discovery, choosing to explore the world before settling into a career. In 2018, Grace set off on a solo trip. Her family supported her decision to explore and encouraged her to embrace the opportunities that awaited her. Grace's journey was meant to be an exciting chapter in her life filled with new experiences, friendships, and adventures. We'll now navigate through the tragic sequence of events that led to Grace's demise. From her date to the dramatic turn of events, culminating in the moment the perpetrator faced justice, Mullane was on a two-week stay in New Zealand, a destination known for its breathtaking landscapes and warm hospitality. After spending six weeks in South America, she entered New Zealand on 20 November 2018 and traveled around the Upper North Island. She arrived in Auckland on 30 November. She had been staying at the 10 pounds a night based backpackers on Queen Street, a popular location for travelers in the center of the city. It was Saturday night, time for a fun evening of laughter and conversation with someone who had caught her eye on a dating app popular with many young people. Grace Mullane's parents raised the alarm after they received no response to the birthday wishes they sent her on December 2, 2018. Mullane's Tinder date with Kempson had taken place the night before on the eve of her 22nd birthday. She was last seen on CCTV around 10 mm on December 1, 2018, going into the hotel that Kempson was living in. The pair were arm in arm as they approached the hotel and earlier had been seen kissing in a nearby bar in Auckland. Mullane's family had described their loss of contact as completely out of characters and reported her missing three days after her birthday, which caused the police to launch what was initially a missing persons investigation. The hotel she was staying at reported that she did not go back to her room on the night of her disappearance. Police initially said that there was no evidence of foul play, but later gathered evidence that she was no longer alive. Police announced on 8 December that they were treating the case as a homicide investigation, and Kempson was subsequently charged with her murder. Jesse Kempson was first approached by police after they discovered he was the last person to post on Mullane's Facebook page. When she did, he using his mobile phone, he looked up hot as fire in Waitakaker Ranges, the location where he would later try to bury Grace in a shallow grave. Subsequently, the perpetrator browsed a pornography website documenting his macabre actions by capturing seven explicit photographs of Grace's lifeless body. These images included close-ups, showcasing the offender manipulating her body to achieve the desired shot. The next morning, while Grace remained deceased in room 308, he texted another woman from Tinder, attempting to arrange a date for later that day. Shortly after this disturbing exchange, he was once again captured on CTV footage purchasing a suitcase. In images presented during the trial, a gray suitcase identical to the one he acquired to dispose of her body could be observed in a nondescript modern hotel room with an unkempt bed. The footage depicted him moving from his room to a recreational store to procure the matching suitcase, then to a supermarket for cleaning products, and finally to a car rental agency. Another piece of evidence showcased during the trial featured his hotel room's carpet stained by luminol, a chemical utilized by law enforcement to unveil bloodstains that had been previously cleaned. 
Renting a red Toyota hatchback, he left the hotel in the afternoon to meet the woman he had been massaging earlier at a bar in the fashionable Auckland suburb of Ponsonby. This woman, a 27-year-old former journalist, found the encounter with the killer very intense, yet quite calm. During their conversation at a bar named Revelry, he disclosed that all his friends were police officers and that his closest friend was en route to New Zealand to become a Crown prosecutor. As they discussed a murder trial she had attended, he remarked on the severity of making one wrong move leading to a lifetime in jail. Returning to his room around 5.45 p.m. on December 2, he rented a rug doctor machine to meticulously clean the carpet, claiming to the shop that it was to eliminate a red wine stain. Then, he parked his rental car outside the hotel, picked up a trolley from the reception, went upstairs and returned with the trolley, which was now carrying two large suitcases, one of which was the same as the one he bought earlier. He loaded the cases into the car and moved it to a nearby car park. Par Throughout the day, surveillance footage captures him repeatedly changing his attire. In the early hours of the following day, around 6, 15 a.m., Kempson is seen exiting the hotel and driving away in his car with a brief stop to purchase a shovel from a store located outside of town. A detective identified him as a person of interest when she noticed that he had left a message on her Facebook page at 9.29 p.m. on December 1 just 11 minutes before they departed from the Bluestone room and proceeded to his room. In this message, he wrote beautiful, very radiant beneath Grace's updated profile picture. Detective Diana Levinson reached out to him with a message, urging him to get in touch. The following morning, the murderer engaged in a conversation with her, stating that he had indeed met Grace, but they had parted ways at 10 p.m. on the Saturday, insisting that was the last time he saw her. When another detective called him to set up a meeting, he promised to provide a formal statement later that day. Unexpectedly, before keeping his promise, he was spotted by another officer at the City Life Hotel. This unforeseen encounter raised suspicions, prompting officers to pursue him and locate him in a nearby shop, leading to his initial interview. During this interview, he recounted the night spent with Grace but continued to assert that he left her at 10. As the investigation progressed, the police obtained CT footage from the hotel, exposing the falsehood in his narrative. When confronted in his second interview, he had no alternative but to confess to killing Grace. However, he altered his story, attempting to justify her death as an accidental outcome during consensual sexual activities, claiming she had requested him to choke her for added pleasure. Grace Millane's body was found on December 9, 2018 in a suitcase that Jesse Kempson had buried in a wooded area outside Auckland. The jury rejected his claim and found him guilty. During his trial, he was described as a sociopath who made some of the women he met or communicated with on Tinder highly uncomfortable. Kempson was unwilling to accept what he had done and showed no remorse, shouting at a judge in one of his three trials. He was jailed for 17 years to run concurrently with the other two sentences of 11 years. Eight months before he killed Grace, he took another British tourist out on a Tinder date. A British tourist faced a harrowing experience at the hands of Kempson, a man soon to be infamous for the murder of Grace. The shocking episode remained a well-kept secret until she saw Kempson's face splashed across media outlets. He was now infamous, a charged murderer. In her testimony to the court, she recounted the numerous occasions where she awoke from sleep, jolted by nightmares and visions of her ordeal. The fear of her predator tracking her down inflicted perpetual dread. Every time I closed my eyes, your menacing stare haunted my dreams, she confessed. In a separate trial, Kempson was found guilty of inflicting terror upon his live in partner. The spectrum of abuse extended over several months involving violent assaults, reprehensible sex acts and life threats brandished with a butcher's knife. His deranged assertion that he was a CIA operative tasked with her execution poured further fuel on his campaign of terror. Tragically, Grace Milan's story took a devastating turn in December 2018. While in Auckland, she met someone through a dating app. What was supposed to be a joyful and carefree exploration of a new country turned into a heart-wrenching incident that captured international attention. Grace's life was cut short, 
sparking conversations about safety, online dating, and violence against women. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more true crime stories. Stay tuned for our next episode where we delve into another shocking case that will leave you on the edge of your seat. Stay safe and peace.